Thank you, Jesus. Well, today, it is great to be with you. I'm excited because we're in a new season. This is great. God is on the move. We were just talking to someone in um, Ron and Teddy Saka in Japan, and they're seeing all kinds of great miracles just over the internet as they're speaking. And Ron is saying it just seems like the anointing is increasing and increasing. And so even though we feel like nothing's changed, we're still in lockdown. The Holy Spirit is not in lockdown. Come on. Ah. So lift your spirit. Say, come on, spirit. Let us worship the Lord. Let us believe him. And today I want to encourage you. This is a, a month of being anchored deeper in God. And you can be anchored in so many ways. But I want to talk to you about a very simple way today, uh, a way that we have learned about for years. But, you know, it's like everything else. A friend of mine has been praying a half an hour in tongues every single day. And, you know, I just thought, gosh, I pray in tongues, but I don't specifically set a time aside to pray in tongues. And I thought, you know what, I need to start doing that. And, you know, it's like everything else. We need to be encouraged to pick up the things that through busyness, through other things, we have let go. And so I want to introduce you to a friend of mine today. And my friend's name is Mr. Sponge. And he's going to help us today. Now, he looks pretty, you know, he's pretty tough. He's pretty stiff. He's pretty scared looking. He's pretty discouraged looking. Catherine was saying this morning, you know, are there those of you out there that are discouraged? Well, you might be feeling like Mr. Sponge. You might be feeling like there's no hope. But we are going to let Mr. Sponge just permeate, marinate, saturate, soak in the presence of the Holy Spirit while we're talking today. And we're going to see what happens when he gets finish soaking at the end of our little talk. And so, Mr. Sponge, we're going to put you over here. We have a, mm, I don't want to put the microphone in the water. No, this is just ordinary water. Oh, it's even warm. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> anyway, Lord, we just pray an anointing of the Holy Spirit over this water. Will you come and saturate it as Mr. Sponge soaks in your presence in this water today, Lord, would you fill him and change him and encourage him and anoint him in Jesus' mighty name. So, Mr. Sponge, have fun. Be soaked. Be permeated. Be filled with more of God. So, while Mr. Sponge is speaking... Uh, I better get dry hands here. Um, I want to talk to you about this thing I call soaking. Psalm 4610 says, Be still and know that I am God. You know, I've always loved to worship. I've always loved to pray. But listening, I didn't know that I could hear the Lord. And I didn't know that I could listen, and he would speak to me. And so that's really what soaking's all about, is taking a, an amount of time just to dedicate it totally to him, to rest before him, to permeate, as I said, to be marinated. Whoa, when you marinate a steak, that marinade just soaks right in. And as we spend time with God, with the Holy Spirit, he comes and he fills us and marinates us. As we love him 
as we worship him, as we adore him. And then we want to listen for what he might be saying to us or seeing what he might be showing us. In other words, we want to experience God. Ah, did you know God can be experienced? I mean, that is so cool. As a little girl growing up, I didn't know that you could actually feel him, actually experience him. It's just a phenomenal, wonderful thing that I've learned along the way, that God is with us, present. He's tangible. You can feel him. You can hear him. You can experience him. And you know, people sometimes will say, oh, well, the Holy Spirit and the moving of the Spirit stopped with the Acts of the Apostles, or, oh, you're just, you know, you know, you people that catch the fire, all you do is lie on the floor and, you know, don't get around to doing anything. Well, that is not true. Through soaking the reality, the presence, powerful, intimate, and life-changing presence of the Lord will come and permeate your being. When I learned about soaking, I was totally transformed, just absolutely transformed. And as we're talking about being anchored, being anchored in the Lord means a transformation, being steady, steadfast, solid, when a ship is anchored, it is not going to crash against the rocks. It is not going to smash. It is not going to be discouraged. It is going to float. It is going, no matter what the storm. And the Bible says if Jesus, you know, the disciples woke him up because there was a huge storm and the, and the boat was filling with water. But when they woke Jesus up, he said, oh, guys, little faith. You know, and he just spoke to the wind and the rain and the weather and the waves, and they stopped. You see, if we are anchored and Jesus is in our boat, is in our heart, those outward storms, we can tell them to stop in Jesus' name, to be gone now, in 1994, most of you know that the Holy Spirit fell on us in tremendous power. I mean, we were, to say the least, overwhelmed. <laughs> That's a kind of an understatement. We were just away out of our depths. But we saw this incredible fruit that was happening in the people. And it was just incredible, a transformation as people immerse themselves in the presence of God. You know, before that time, I'd been to meetings, to um, a Catherine Kuhlman meeting, to Benny Hinn meetings, and seeing the power of the Holy Spirit move and lives totally transformed. That gave me a hunger and a desire to want more. You know, growing up in in a denominational church, it was all about God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. You know, and as a kid, I knew what a ghost was, but I didn't know what a holy one was, and nobody told me. And so when Catherine Coleman came out on that platform that day, I was at her meeting, she said, that the Holy Spirit was more real to her than any human being. I mean, that just went into my heart. I mean, it was just life-changing. I thought, you mean I can get to know the Holy Spirit? I mean, really? I can get to know him as a person, and he will be that real to me? more than any person, but how do I do that? Well, if you're like me, you get busy. I don't know. I thought 
being locked down, you wouldn't be busy. But I don't know about you, but it seems that we've been busy, <laughs> which is kind of crazy, but it's true. You get Zoom calls and meeting calls, and you have your children home, you're homeschooling now, on and on and on. Life is busy. Your husband's now working from home, or you're working from home. So it's not that you're just kind of going, okay, what am I going to do? You know, busy. Well, when I learned to soak, I was a pastor's wife, actually a pastor's wife in this church, which is really cool to be here this morning. And, um, you know, if you'd have asked me if I was in love with Jesus and, you know, spending time with him and, you know, I would have said, yes, of course I love him. I'm, I, but you know what? I did, but I had really lost that first love, that passion for him. And throughout life, we get tested along the way with things that will take our attention, that will cause us to be depressed, that will maybe sickness, maybe the lockdown with now having to homeschool. It just, everything changes. And the enemy wants us not to be focused on him and his love. Through that first period of time, when I was really working hard for Jesus, and I thought that I, you know, my love affair was up, but when actually I wasn't spending a lot of intimate time. Yes, I was reading. Yes, I was praying. Yes, I was spending some time. But I wasn't pressing in like I had been. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Carol, I have many servants, but I have few lovers. And you know, that just went into my heart. And I thought, God, I, I don't want to just serve you. I want to be in love. I want to be a bride that is ready for you. I want to be passionate. And so when we started this church, I was really shy. I was really intimidated. I mean, John gave me six months to get a message for Mother's Day, and I absolutely freaked out. I mean, I ugh, was just horrible. I looked through the scriptures, couldn't find anything to speak on. I finally found something, and, and I wrote it all out, and, and, and it took me six months to, to get a message together, and and then the, the night before, I was up the whole night, and the day of the message, I think I just, I think I stood here like this and, and read the whole message. I was so scared. Oh, my gosh. It was just incredible. But we had a man come to Jubilee, and his name was Mark DuPont, and we had a, a leaders meeting in our basement. And Mark came up to me, and he said, Carol, I see you speaking to hundreds and hundreds of leaders and thousands and thousands of people. And I laughed out loud. And in my heart, I said, some prophet you are. <laughs> I've gone back and apologized to him since. But my goodness, how soaking has changed all that. And I really believe that not only your own relationship with Jesus will become so intimate and so sweet and so precious, but your life, your ministry to your children, to your husband, to your neighbors will change. Now, some of you are super soakers at Jubilee. I know that. But it's like speaking in tongues. You know, we, we get busy with other things and let some things slide. And I really feel in this season that the Lord is calling us back 
to just press in to be that bride that has eyes for only him, that gets in to that heart, that deep-centered heart of God. I was talking to a friend of mine, a missionary. Uh, you would know her if I told you her who she was. Incredible things that she deals with every day and, and is in war and death and but through that, people are coming to Christ. But she says herself if I told that her who she was, incredible things that she deals with every day and, and is in war and death. And, but through that, people are coming to Christ. But she says herself if I told that her who she, she was, just absolutely that she says she cannot go one day or even a half a day without just soaking, marinating, spending time with Jesus because he is her strength. He is her all. So what do I mean by soaking? You might be asking. You might be saying, well, how do I soak? I don't even know what you're talking about. And why do I soak? They're all really good questions. Soaking is positioning yourself before God to love him, to worship him, to adore him. The Bible says he is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and truth. He is just searching for those ones that will take time to be with him. And so we soak to love him, to adore him, to worship him, to just spend time with him. And then we also spend time listening to what he might want to say to us. Did you know God wants to talk to you? He does. Psalm 149 says that God has more to say to you than all the grains in every beach and sand on the earth. I mean, that is a lot of words. He really wants communication. He really wants to talk to you, to communicate with you, to have a relationship with you. Yes, you. He wants to do that. It's listening. It's learning how to listen to that still, small voice. Um, they said that when Catherine was announcing, Charmaine's going to be teaching. I so encourage you, do not miss that. It transformed our lives when Mark Verkler taught us how to hear the voice of God. And you, too, can listen for that still, small voice and begin to have one-to-one -one direct communication with the Lord. Then it's being immersed in the tangible presence of the Lord. Uh-oh, there's <coughs> excuse me, nothing like feeling his presence, experiencing that close, having that peace. Oh, just rest upon you. There's nothing like having your heart and your body, your mind at peace. It is a wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this is not a time for prayerless. This is not a time for petitions, for intercession. Those are all extremely important, but... This is a time of intimacy, experiencing God in reality, knowing him, getting to know him. This is really the first commandment. Matthew twenty two thirty seven 37 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and then with all your mind. You know, we've been taught for years, as I was growing up, to love the Lord your God with all your mind. 
Never mind the experiencing. I mean, forget that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. What does that look like? Well, if you watch two young people in love, oh my goodness, they only have eyes for each other. They're hot and they're oh, and they're talking and they're holding hands and they're they're just in love with each other. And that's what a relationship is with the Lord. Looking at him face to face, hearing his words of love and affirmation, changing how we see ourselves. It is such a wonderful thing. Most of us start off with soaking as a hard thing to do because we've been taught all of our lives to be busy, to do, 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 to get things done, to stop daydreaming, just get it together, you know, memorize your scriptures, do your homework. What you do in life is what is your um, crown, is your goal, is your success, succession. You know, you succeed in life by doing. But, you know, succeeding in life is knowing God, is really knowing him. You may have all the money in the world. You may have all the position in the world. But in the light of eternity, if you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are a complete failure in life. And soaking will help. Now, it will take a little bit of time because our, our brain, our mind, wants to take control, not our spirit. And we need to let our spirit man take control. Psalm 45, again, 10, says, Be still and know that I am God. Do we know how to be? Do we know how to be still? Do you know how to be still? Ooh, it's already beginning to feel a little uncomfortable. Why do we need to be still? Because there's so much clatter when we're noise, 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 noise. We can't hear that still, small voice. And so quieting our spirit, being still, facilitates us hearing the voice of God, knowing him. See, we've been taught always to be on duty to actually perform, to actually strive to be a success in something, not walk in that kind of peace. During the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is still going on around the world, even on the internet, which is super exciting, so, ha, be filled. Start to drink of his presence. Holy Spirit, as they're watching and listening, let your presence begin to permeate each home that's watching, Lord. Wow. You want to begin to marinate in his presence right now. You know, we would pray for people all over the world, and they would be, for the most part, out under the power of God lying on the carpet. But some of them would stay for like one or two minutes or five minutes max and then pop up again. And I would say, oh, don't do that. And they'd say, yeah, but I don't, you know, I'm, I said, well, it, I'm not getting anything. I said, have you asked the Lord? Are you, has he got more for you? Do you, do you want to, you know, ask him whether you should be getting up? And a lot of times, I'll just go and pray for them again. And they get 
deeper into him, the Lord begins to speak to them. The Lord begins to show them things. And if they get up too quickly, they've missed the, the whole point. It's not in the falling down. It's the connecting with God. It's experiencing him that is really the important thing. He wants more than a five-minute fling. He wants a deepening, intimate relationship with you. I'm going to ask you a question. How much do you really value the presence of God? Is it something that you really value? Well, let's look at Mary and Martha. Luke 10, 38 to 42. You know the story. Jesus comes in. He knows Mary and Martha, Martha, Lazarus, the whole family. He knows them all. So he comes into their house. Now, can you imagine at least 13, probably more, because there was usually more following, comes in to their house, you know? And it's like, I bet Martha was a really good cook. And uh, so the guys are, you know, guys being guys are always hungry. So, you know, kind of nudges Martha on the way in and says, hey, Martha, what's for dinner? You know? And then the next one comes along and, yeah, Martha, you got something good cooking? I'm really starving. And so Martha goes into the doer mode. And she's in the kitchen and she's got the pots flying in the and cooking in the stove lid, and she's just cooking up a storm here. And all of a sudden, she's thinking, where's Mary? I need some help. And so she looks and can't find Mary, and here's Mary in with the guys and whoever else is in the living room, and Mary's at his feet, just listening to Jesus, just taking in every single word, every single thing that he is saying. And Martha goes, Mary, 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 Mary. And there's Mary. And finally, Martha gets so ticked off so that she's just like, she marches in, in front of Jesus, Jesus, will you tell my sister to get out here in the kitchen and help me? And Jesus said this, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about so many things. But Mary has chosen the best, and it will not be taken away from her. Choose the best. Choose spending time in his presence. I don't think for a second that Martha was late or Mary was lazy. But she chose the best. She chose Jesus and his presence. So what does it look like physically? What how do you position yourself? What do you do? Well, when I soak, I put on worship music. Worship music that draws my heart. Like that one song you sang this morning, Jesus. There's something about that name, Jesus, Jesus. That draws my heart to love him. You want songs that, that draw your heart. Helps me turn my, my brain off because your brain wants to take charge. A lot of times I'll say, brain, I thank you for all that you do for me, but right now I just want you to step down and I want my spirit to come forth, to be in charge, to connect with the Holy Spirit. And our minds will take some doing, so it might take you a week or two to get your mind and to make sure that the devil isn't putting stuff in your mind 
because he loves to do that. He'll say, oh, you forgot to phone this one. You need to do this. You, you promised so-and-so this. And, and it's just a flood of stuff. And they could be all right things to do. But we just, at first what I did was I just got a piece of paper and I wrote down. And eventually he gave up. He didn't bother my mind anymore. So I get comfortable either on the floor, on a bed, on a couch, but I get comfortable. Turn off the phones. Turn, you know, put a little note in my door. Do not disturb for one hour or whatever time I've set aside to soak. Just get quiet. But maybe you're saying to me, but Carol, I read my Bible every day. I pray every day. Yes, I know. Let's look at why it's so important to soak. The Bible is a book of law, of prophecy, of history, of poetry, and of teaching. But guess what? It all comes out of the experiences of its leading characters. God wants to give you an experience with him. That's called relationship. That's called intimacy. That's called connecting heart to heart. Soaking is experiencing his presence, and it opens up our heart and soul. Wow. Hmm to divine romance, and to intimacy with God. Oh, doesn't that sound fantastic? You can have a divine romance with the King of Kings. You're going to be with him in eternity forever if you know him. You know, we need to begin to be the bride of Christ now to have that intimacy now. You're not going to start once you get there because he's looking for those that really love him. Each time you spend with him might be different. Sometimes it's just you absolutely adoring him. And then you'll adore him and then you'll say, oh, Lord, I've just been taking all the time. Lord, what do you want to say to me? What's on your heart? And then you'll begin to speak words to your heart. Now, the next thing you need to do is believe what he says. You know, we had a guy come to the church, and I taught on soaking. And he, I think it was a couple of months, he went home, and he did what, he, what I had taught him to do. But he, he was from the States, and he came all the way back up to Toronto. And he came up to me in a, in a conference, and he said, you know, I'm really frustrated. And I said, oh, sir, what happened? And he said, I did exactly what you said for months, every day, every day, every day. And he said, the Lord keeps saying the same thing to me. Doesn't the Lord have more voc vocabulary than a couple of words? He said, I am totally frustrated. I said, oh, my goodness, sir. Well, let's, you just lie down. I'll sit down beside you, and, and we'll ask the Lord. And so he asked the Lord. I said, Lord, this man is really frustrated. And you've just been saying a few words to him. Lord, what is he missing in those words? What is he not getting? And so we just listened to the worship and soaked for a few minutes. And all of a sudden, the guy floods of tears. And he sits up and he says, do you know what the Lord just said to me? He said, I'm going to keep telling you, I love you, my son, until it goes from here to here. You see, the man was saying, oh. Lord can't love me because I'm this, I'm that, I've done this, I've done that. And he just wouldn't receive it. But the Lord wanted him to know in his heart of hearts that he was his son. 
And so we need to believe what God says to us. So have a journal. Trevor, I have a, my soaking book in the journal in that little bag. I forgot to bring it up. But I, Destiny Image was <laughs> bugging me. They were so uh, insistent that I write this little book on soaking and a journal to go with it to help you to really, you know, um, be able to press in. So when God says something to you, like, I love you, my son, begin to just um, look it over. So this is, this is the little book that'll help you. It's little, not very big. And so you can read a chapter, and it has an activation in it. So that will help you get started. And then this is the journal that you can write down in the things that God would say to you. And it's got little helps along the way as well to be able to uh, increase your time with the Lord. You don't have to have those, but they are helpful. God does so, so many things. Before, I didn't ever know that I could hear God's voice. I didn't know that he wanted to speak to me, that he wanted to really let me into his heart. And he, I mean, can you imagine the God of the universe has time for you and me? I mean, that's powerful. We need to get a handle on that. It's not just when you're lying on the floor. It's when you're walking down the street. Once you connect and you begin to hear his voice, you can just soak or step back into his presence and say, oh, Lord, I just want to tell you I love you. Will you come grocery shopping with me today? And he comes with you. Or for the guys, it could be go to the hardware store or go to the fishing sh shop or wherever. Go skidooing, whatever it is. It's a relationship. But as we cultivate that relationship, it becomes sweeter and sweeter and easier to access no matter where you are. You can soak for five minutes at a stoplight. Just say, Lord, I'm just going to love you. I'm just going to ask you, is there anything you want me to do? Who do you want me to call? Anything you want me to say to someone? Begin to ask him for encouraging words. Ask him who needs prayer for healing, for depression, for whatever. Soaking has also given me a holy boldness, a boldness that I do not have in the natural. Sha, sure. there's been many times in many stories, we'll tell you some other times, of stories where um, people would try to put me down when I was ministering, so pray for me and sort of get me out of the way. <laughs> and, uh, because I couldn't stand in the anointing. I mean, it was Mark DuPont again that would say, because I would be always on the floor in the, in the early days of the revival. The Holy Spirit would come, and boom, I'm down under the power of God. And Mark said, Carol, how are you going to lead a revival if you're always on the floor? And I said, well, Mark, I don't know, but I can't stand. It was about two weeks later he came, and he's got this, he's got a huge hand. If you know Mark DuPont, his hand is huge. And he put this big, huge hand on the top of my head. And girls don't like to have big hands on the top of their head, guys. Heads up. <laughs> don't mess with the hair. Anyway, <laughs> it was just, anyway, he put his hand on the top of my head, and he said, thus saith the Lord. Ugh. Woo. I better not do that. Mm. Ah. Whoa. The Lord says you can stand in the anointing 
or you can yield to his presence. Wow. And from that moment on, I had the ability to either minister and function upright, <laughs> or I could yield to the Holy Spirit. It was just an amazing learning time. It's funny how we, we learn all different things during the course of, of growing with the Lord. But it's always fun, and it's always interesting, and it's always exciting. And so the anointing of God soaking, marinating in his presence made room for little old me, for shy me, for timid me, for someone that didn't think she was all that smart or whatever and had really no abilities or talents. God made room for me, and he has a plan and a destiny for each and every one of you, and it will blow your minds what he has in store for each and every one of you. And I know, I absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt that if the Holy Spirit ever took his hand off of me, I would go back to that fearful, shy, intimidated person again because I know it's him. I am his care, the carrier of his presence, and so are you. And as we get permeated with more of him, the more of him we'll carry because it's him flowing out through us and the Holy Spirit, you know, he likes to be in control. Now, mind you, he really works well with us. You know, one time John was in a meeting and, and a guy came up to him because John would go down the line and say, fill him, Lord, free him, Lord, you know, bless him, Lord, whatever he'd say. But he was sort of commanding the Holy Spirit, right? And so this guy came up to him after. He said, I've been watching you minister. And he said... Um, it seems to me that you are telling the Holy Spirit what to do. And John just kind of like, oh, dear. And so he went home and he kind of pondered it and, and you know, said, Holy Spirit, have I done anything to offend you or, or, you know, have I prayed wrongly? And the Holy Spirit said, no. You're speaking what I'm putting in you. You're, you're pouring out. We are a team. But the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God the Father are still the ones that are in charge. We're just the vessels that go through. And he has given, Jesus said, I have given you all authority. Ah, So, let the Holy Spirit move through you, and fill you. But be like little children with him because he loves it when, you know how your little boy or girl comes up to you and, and says, Mommy, Mommy, look, I can do this. Look what happened, you know. This is really great. And, and we, you know, I can, I can jump off this, this platform, or I can do this, and and you're just proud of them because they're 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 trying. But you know that you need to be there as their safety, as their protection. And the Holy Spirit is right with us. He's in us. He's through us. He's our comforter. He's our teacher. He's our helper. He is so precious, as Catherine Coleman said. Get to know the Holy Spirit as well and let him become your best friend in your walk with the Lord. What is the price of soaking? Well, in the days where we could all meet together, which I am hoping we'll soon have again, the the price was vulnerability and humility. You know, we had a lot of people say, oh, I like the anointing that you have. I want what you have. But I don't want to do what you're doing. 
I'm not going to lie on the floor. I'm not going to shake. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to whatever. What's that? Pride. And vulnerability. I mean, it's vulnerable to lie on the floor. It's vulnerable. People looking at you going, hmm, I wonder what she's doing. That looks a little odd. Looks a little weird. Haven't seen that before. Well, who cares? Who cares what they think? You know, a lot of people have missed it because of the manifestations. Now, you don't have to have a manifestation. But if you do, a lot of people stumble over that. John's often said, you know, bless you. If you don't want it, that's great. I'll have your portion. I'll have your share. Right? But I want all that we can get. And you know how you can tell? It's by the fruit. What is the fruit of their lives as you're getting through? Now, soaking does not mean you're not going to accomplish anything for God because you will accomplish more for God in that time that you spend with the Lord in a relationship than you would if you didn't. I've just found everything goes easier. People get healed. People get set free. People get filled with the Holy Spirit. You can walk up to somebody and, you know, I do that all the time in the grocery store and say, I just feel the Lord um, would like me to pray for you. Would that be all right? It's a little more difficult in COVID. <laughs> but uh, before then, I would do it in airports, whatever, whenever the Lord would tell me. And they would get healed. They would get freed. Their family would get touched. And because they think that Christians are going to go home on their knees and pray. They don't think you're going to do it right there. And God moves. And he will move through each and every one of you. You see, soaking will change your life. It will connect you with the intimate, powerful presence of God. Sarah Edwards, the wife of Jonathan Edwards, uh, the Great Awakening, 1740, summed it up so well. She didn't call it soaking, but that's what it was. In her famous statement, she says it all. I am overwhelmed by his nearness to me and my dearness to him. Wow. Lord, that is my prayer for each and every one today that you will be overwhelmed by his nearness to you and your dearness to him. Now, we are going to soak for a little of time. And, but first, let's see how Mr. Sponge is doing. You know, Mr. Sponge has been having a wonderful soak, probably 45 minutes soak. So he's going to be really saturated. Oh, he's much softer. Ho, ho, ho. Mr. Sponge, you're so heavy with the anointing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, you look much better, Mr. Sponge. Whoa, ho, ho. you are dripping. Whoa. <laughs> with the power of God. Oh, you want to... Be happy like Mr. Sponge. You want to be dripping in the anointing <laughs> with Mr. Sponge? Wow. Let's have a soaking time. I want you to get positioned. You can lie on your chairs. You can lie on the floor. You can lie and get comfortable. Just get comfortable. Do we have some soaking music? Yes, we do. Ah, oh, thank you, Michael. And I think there's a chat line. Is that right, Trevor? 
and a Zoom. Um, so if, when we're finished, we're going to soak 10 minutes. But we want to teach you how to just position yourself. And if you get something from the Lord, I want you to text in, um, chat on the chat line, phone in, Zoom in. We want to hear from you because testimonies encourage others. So let's just position ourselves, get, get comfortable first. Ah. Just pray with me. Holy Spirit, I want to position myself today to connect with God. I want to hear what you're saying to me. I want to see what you're showing me. And I want to tell you how much I love you. And Lord, I just tell my mind to be still. And I say to my spirit, spirit, Rise up and connect with the Holy Spirit. Wow. I want you to take a big, deep breath. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. And breathe out all the frustrations the discouragements, the depression, the busyness, the what-ifs. And we just lay all of that at the foot of Jesus. And Jesus, I invite you to come. Father, I invite you to come. And be with me. And talk to me. Lord, I just choose to love you right now. Lord, I'm so grateful. So grateful. That you, Jesus, have found me. That I'm your child. You came and rescued me, Jesus. And I love you. This morning, and I worship you. Just begin to tell him your heart. Some of you were beginning to feel just a, a blanket of peace flooding over your body. That's Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. Just begin to welcome him.
Lord, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside the still waters. Lord, I drink in of you right now. Lord, you want me to be still. You want me to be beside the still waters. You want me to be in the green pastures, to restore my soul. Thank you, Lord. As you're tuning in to him, begin to ask him if he wants to say something to you or wants to show you something. Remember Psalm 139 says that he has so much to say to you. in the grains of the sea and the sand. How precious are your thoughts to me, O Lord. How great is the sum of them. If I should count, they would be more than the number of the sand. your mind wanders away, just bring it back. Focus back on the Lord.
if he begins to show you a picture, it might be just a quick fleeting picture. Just grab a hold of that picture. Say, Lord, what are you saying to me in this? Speak to me about what you're showing me. As you're soaking, God is even coming to heal you. There's healing in his presence. There's restoration for your mind. Fear, anxiety must leave because of your presence, Lord. So I ask you to lift off the heaviness and the fear of your beloveds. Jesus, we love your presence. Lord, would you increase, Holy Spirit, would you increase your tangible presence with each person that is soaking right now? Would you let that glory soak them, permeate them, Fill them, refresh them. Love them beyond anything they've ever known before. If you've had the Lord come say something to you or show you something, speak to you, I want you to get on the chat line, get on the Zoom call in, because you see it encourages, testimonies encourage one another.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that as we talk today, that you will just immerse each one Psalm 37, 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Lord, we just calm ourselves in you. And you know, if you get stressed during the week, if you get anxious, just take five minutes and just bring yourself to peace with him. Say, Lord, I just want to love you. Another good way is online you can get a a 10 minute timer that you can, you can, it's longer than 10 minutes, it can be an hour timer, but you can set for 10 minutes or you can use your phone, set it on repeat for every 10 minutes. If you're struggling, put your phone on for 10 minutes and um, every time the timer goes off, just raise your hands and worship him and wait for his presence. I used to do that for years. I had a season where I was in, and it was a over a three-year season where I could not feel his presence on a day-to-day -day basis. Mind you, when I went to minister, he was still there, but I was so frustrated. Talk about in the wilderness, and I did everything I knew to do. And a friend from Germany told me about doing these timers. And we, mine was a little 10 minute timer and I clipped on my, on my um, belt and it would go off every 10 minutes and it was just amazing because I would in, in those days I lived in Toronto and people would cut you off in traffic all the time and you'd be ready to maybe kind of and the timer would go off and you thought, oh, you can't say something bad and worship the Lord at the same time. And it was just an amazing way to stay in his presence, to stay focused in his love. Wow, it's just a wonderful thing. I don't know whether we have any testimonies. Okay, yeah, I think maybe we do. Don't be, don't be hesitant to, you know, share what, um, what God spoke to you in that quiet time because it's precious and it does encourage. And those of you that, that got something, it could be as simple as I really love you or you are my precious one, I encourage you to put it on a little piece of paper and stick it on your mirror and look at your eyes and read that to yourself and get it from here to into your heart because you see, it's the way God really sees you. You are his precious beloved. Is he going to leave you the way you are? Of course not. But he takes us little by little, step by step along the way to being healed and restored. <laughs>